Tonight, I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone. I've been challenged. Vanessa from Crafty Gemini sent me some of her precious stash to make a tote bag. So I sent her some of my fabric to do the same. I'm not much of a bag maker, obviously, but I'm excited to learn a new skill. So let's get quilting. I mean, let's get bag making. Let's sew those straps on. Never mind, let's just do it. Since I'm obviously not great at making bags, I asked my friends at Craftsy to help me out with a bag pattern, which they did. You can download it for free, use your stash, and make your own bag. And hey, why not invite a friend for a fun twist? Share pictures of what you end up making using the hashtag MidnightStashChallenge, and you can find all the details about that in the description box below. And remember, this is only for your stash, even if it's fabric you bought today. I am digging the colors she sent me, and she actually designed some of these fabrics. I mean, no pressure, right? I tried to get her to do like a whole cloth quilt or something machine quilting focused, but this is good, this is good. All right, I have my stash. I'm gonna start chopping it into strips. So this free pattern is called Tiki Toe, and what makes it so great for a stash buster is that it uses two and a half inch strips. So if you already have some of those stray pre-cut strips laying around, perfect. If not, just go ahead and start chopping it up. If you're not familiar with Crafty Gemini, she has an amazing YouTube channel where she talks about a lot of fun, different things from crafting to family. And we actually have a little bit in common. We both have goats, so it's always fun to see pictures of her little babies. And if you're visiting the Midnight Quilt Show from her channel, thanks for stopping by. Leave a comment below and let me know if this is your first time. In case you're wondering what it is I'm doing, well, I'm celebrating the best time of night by making some quilts and enjoying a little bit of uh, my piecing potion. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of these fun Midnight Quilt Show episodes. So I'm gonna leave some of these strips longer, but the rest of them are gonna be cut into smaller pieces, which you'll see why here in just a little bit. So I'm gonna use these smaller rectangles to make a braid unit for the outside of my bag. And that's basically just a quilt block. That's no problem, right? So laying them out, and I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit random, having fun with all these bright, beautiful colors. So the first two blocks, I'm gonna lay them just like so, and then just gonna sew a little bit down the side. So that's the first part of my braid unit. I could go ahead and press this, but I think I'll use my seam roller, just flatten it down a little bit flatten the seam. I'm thinking this bag making stuff isn't so scary. I don't know what I was worried about. And I'm gonna keep working my way up the braid unit, sewing, pressing, and sewing. So the first part of my bag is finished. Now I'm gonna trim it up, but first I'm gonna go ahead and press it. I probably normally wouldn't do this, but I kinda wanna make sure it looks really good for her. So let's do that. and then the top and the bottom. And just like that, voila, my first braid unit. I just need three more to make the front part of my bag. What I love about this bag pattern is that the seams don't match, so there's no pressure about making sure it's perfectly pieced. Look at how pretty and bright and cheery that is. I think that's it, that's the layout I want. So I'm gonna sew these together, and it gets one more two and a half inch strip across the top, and that will be the first panel. First part of the bag is finished. I have the second half, which will be the back side or the front side, depending on how you look at it. And all that's left to do is make this into the outer shell. But I'm not quite ready for that yet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make the lining and then focus on putting it together. I think it's going good so far, so let's do that. The lining is super simple, even easier than the outside. I just have to sew these together and put a strip across the top. All right, and there's the first part of my lining. Just need to add the strip on the top. I think I kept all the strips in the right spot. If not, we'll call it an unintentional customization. Beautiful. All right, half the lining is done. The second half of the lining is done. I have all the outside done. All that's left is to um, turn it into a bag. Not nervous about that at all. Is it getting hot in here? I feel like it's hot. It's gonna be fine. All right, let's make this into a bag. I've made a few bags, but I'm just still a little nervous. But according to the instructions in the pattern, all I need to do is get my fusible batting, which I have, get my outside panel, 
and iron it. So it's basically like a quilt sandwich, just without the backing. It's not so hard. So I'll fuse this on here and then trim it up and it'll be time to sew around the edges. So I have all my supplies filled and ready to go. And in my mind, I'm thinking this is basically like making a pillow, except I'm only sewing three sides together and let's hope that I do the sides and the bottom. So I'm going to put them right sides together and then I'm going to pin these in place or clip them in place so that they don't move. Now normally I wouldn't worry about this thing, you know, because close enough is good enough and finish is better than perfect, but I'm starting to think that might just be in machine quilting, not so much in bag making or brain surgery or things like that. But I'm just gonna keep these in place and then sew around the sides. So this walking foot sure is coming in handy for this bag. I love how it pulls all the layers through together and hopefully I won't have any tucks or pleats in the bag. Okay, outside of the bag is finished, so nice. I guess I didn't really think that through. So now I'm gonna quilt a zigzag stitch around the outside to reinforce that seam. So I know it does a zigzag. I'm pretty sure I did it once before. I never mess with any of the decorative stitches, but I know, there we go. It'll be fun to do a different, I'll do. Looks like a zigzag. All right, let's see. Oh, I never use these stitches when I'm machine quilting. Oh, oh, there it goes. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did try this before I made this bag. I thought I need to make sure I know how to do this part. And it's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna take my corner and I'm gonna pull both sides, making sure I have both pieces of fabric, there we go. And I'm gonna line up these seams together, so almost like they're right on each side of each other. And then that gives me my point. And then eyeballing about two inches from that point. So from here, just kind of roughly looking at two inches, I'm gonna draw a line right there and then stitch right on it. Sewing on there and it says to sew it twice just to help reinforce it. So I'm gonna back up by going in reverse. Now that I have my boxed corner, I'm gonna trim it about a quarter of an inch away and you'll see how that makes the edge of my bag. Normally I would do both corners before I showed you, but I'm kind of excited. There we can see the first corner of my bag. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side and then I'll get to the lining. The great thing is making the lining is just like I made the top. The only difference is I don't have any fusible batting and I'm gonna leave about a four to five inch gap in the bottom of it so I can use that to turn the bag inside out later. Once I get to the middle of the bottom side of the lining, I'm gonna stop and leave about a four to five inch unpieced gap. Basically, I need a hole right here. So when I'm ready to move on, I'm gonna actually backstitch a little bit just to help secure that. I'm gonna break my thread, jump ahead about four to five inches, and then resume, doing the same thing. Okay, so the lining is put together, and you know you've done it right when you can reach your hand right in and you know grab your glass of wine. We're gonna use that gap or that hole later on to turn the whole bag inside out. I'm gonna box the corners the same way I did on the outside, and then it'll be time to make the bag straps. You know what I love about the internet? You can find out how to do everything, including making bag straps. So I figured out how to do this. I have my two strips for my straps. I'm going with a double-sided strap. That's right, it's a scrappy bag. I thought it'd be fun to change it up. One strap has fusible interfacing iron to it. Had to look high and low through my stash, but I finally found some fusible interfacing, yay. And then what I'm gonna do is use this little strip right here to help make the bag turning go a little smoother. So using that selvage end, I'm just gonna sew it in place right here, and it's gonna help me later on when it comes to turn it inside out. So I have my cute little strap in place, and now I'm gonna take my actual bag straps and sew them together, right sides facing each other. I'm gonna do a quarter inch on each side and then turn it inside out. Now I have my strap ready to go, but I need to turn it right sides out, so that's when I'm gonna use my little string to help facilitate that. So pulling it through until I have it the right way. So now I've got turned right side out. I'm gonna trim this off because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm gonna carefully press it nice and flat and then top stitch the sides. Now that my strap is flat and somewhat straight, I'm gonna top stitch by sewing a quarter inch on each side of the strap. And because I love a little pop of color, I'm gonna use a teal thread, which I think will look fun on this black and white fabric. And the second bag handle's finished with the double-sided feature, love that. I'm just glad they're finished. This is definitely not my favorite part, but now it's time to sew these to the edge of the bag. I'm gonna place the handles right sides together with the bag, and I'm gonna line them about six inches from each side. 
Now that's not a number I made up on my own, that's what the pattern says, and I am following the pattern. I figure making a bag is like making a recipe. You do it right the first time and then you can change it after you know what you're doing. All right, so six inches from the edge, my white little chalk pencil. I know you can't see it, but I can. That's all that matters. And I'm gonna put it in place and I'm gonna use my clip to hold it while I baste it. That's just gonna keep it from shifting on me. And then six inches on the other side. And then I'm gonna sew it in place, but with just like an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just really, really tiny, just to hold it in place for when I sew the whole bag together. I normally only sew an eighth of an inch seam allowance when I'm trying to make up for some um, creative piecing or if I'm trying to get a quilt to fit together. But now I'm doing it on purpose. It's kind of mm, a little bit more difficult. Perfect, one handle somewhat tacked in place. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. This is where it all comes together. I'm gonna leave my bag exterior right side out and I'm gonna make sure that these handles are laying down. We don't wanna get them caught in that seam. But my lining, the inside, is going to be opposite. It's going to be right sides inside. Like that, kind of like, you know, I put my shirt on wrong. <laughs> and then this is gonna slip over our bag. I would guess this is where you find out if you made your lining too small. That might be bad. So using my clips, I'm gonna try to align up the side seams as much as I can and clip it in place and then sew a quarter inch all along those raw edges. All right, move my party decoration out of the way. And the bag is done. Well, almost, but I get to turn it inside out. And this is where it's really fun where you get to see what it turns out being. Look how pretty that is. It just needs one more top stitch around the top and then we'll get to see what it looks like in all its beautiful glory. Okay, actually, I need to press it before I top stitch it so that lining doesn't show up, but unfortunately my ironing board is upstairs covered in boxes and laundry that's clean and needs to be folded. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. I'll be right back. Fantastic. I think it's gonna work great. Let's see what stuff I can fit inside of it. So this challenge went off without a hitch. I'm so pleased with how the bag turned out. Now I have to admit, I'm going through machine quilting withdrawals, but it's totally worth it when I have a bright, cheery, stash-busting bag like this. I can't decide what I like better, the scrappiness of the bag or the fun double-sided straps, and it just happens to be the perfect size for a nice refreshment. I hope Vanessa loves it as much as I do. So be sure to go check out Crafty Gemini's YouTube channel and you can see what she made with the scraps that I sent her. We want you to join us. So go to crafty.com and download the free quilt pattern and share your pictures of what you're making on Instagram using hashtag midnight stash challenge and tag at be craftsy and at Crafty Gemini with your beautiful projects. And if this is your first time on the Midnight Quilt Show, thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to subscribe because you never know what's gonna happen on the Midnight Quilt Show. Well, happy quilting and happy bag making.